Um, yeah, and in a sense, not being there at the start shaped what happened after we joined, because we joined a club that hadn't been made with our input, didn't we? So it all felt a bit... Well, look, who ever takes account of anybody outside the membership? Mm. I mean, what's the point of joining a club <laughs> if you're just going to be trying to work out how to look after people who are not members? I mean, so... Uh, and and what, what happened? Well, we, we all know exactly what happened. Basically, the French were very worried about the vast swathe of country to the south, which um, could easily have begun to become depopulated as the people left for the towns. The Germans wanted a bigger market for their industrial products. Deal? Yes. German subsidy to keep the French citizens in the countryside at the common agricultural policy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, if we'd been there, it wouldn't have been the same because we would have had a very different view about the agricultural support system. But we weren't there. And so when the European um, community was then started, it was a deal between France and Germany, mm -hmm. uh, embracing another four countries. Um, and, um, well, you know, that's how it happened. And of course, you fast forward and, and to, to 1986, I think, um, uh, when Margaret created the single market. Mm -hmm. And what was that all about? We're never going to let the French and Germans do it again because we had complained bitterly about the effects of why we, weren't, why we had to abide by uh, the European rules. Uh, so Margaret, uh, I, I would argue, her single greatest achievement was the single European market. Margaret sent Arthur Cofield to Brussels. He was a tax inspector, a chartered accountant, a former cabinet minister, a very formidable man, he, to negotiate our interests in the single market. And uh, there is no doubt at all that it was, from Britain's point of view, a very significant achievement in our self-interest but in Europe's self-interest. And of course, what then, <laughs> it all went wrong because it was the idea, talking to you here now, the audience listening, wonderful, single market, fantastic. But to the small businessman who was his own finance director, his own marketing director, his own salesman, his own production engineer, sitting, oh my God, I've had a terrible day. Oh, it was another form. A directive turned into a regulation on his desk, f complex, detailed, and another one yesterday, and two more tomorrow, because the single market needed a myriad of standard harmonization in which you embraced all the European nations' self-interest but all their rules had to be put into one. And so by the end of the 80s, the feeling of them, Brussels, foreigners, was beginning to penetrate. And the, we have newspapers who are good at exploiting that.